All right, here's where we're at today. Um, you've seen me do my bacon and ground beef before. I've already done that. The, actually, the ground beef is in the oven right now. I've started this process. I'm just going to let you see me do the last two. These are pork steaks. Um, they are pork shoulder butt blade steaks. So I, I had them out for a little bit and I was like, man, that's a lot of work what I'm planning and I don't really want to do it. So I stuck them back in the freezer and then I changed my mind. So they're kind of partially frozen, which means I'm going to have to let them sit out a little bit. However, it also means sometimes that it cuts better. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the bone. I've already done it on four. That's the crunching sound you hear in the background. Um, I've given one to all the dogs. Dogs can eat pork, raw pork. It doesn't give them any funky diseases. Dogs are carnivore. They come from wolves. And just because the past however many years we've chosen to feed them kibble, doesn't mean that genetically they can't eat what wolves eat. So, anyway, so just thought I'd throw that out there so you don't complain about that. This is the bone, and of course you can see meat that I left on there. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it. Because um, I will probably, I'll put this in the freezer, and when I defrost the other ones and cut those bones out, I might have extra of those and I can kind of put it together. I have all the dogs separated, so that way nobody gets mad at each other. But um, I'm just going along the edge of this bone because what I want to do, let me just tell you ahead of time, see if you feel like watching this. I am going to deep fry these pork chops in my deep fryer. Now, you know, yes, I could use an air fryer if I wanted, but as I've got this deep fryer and, you know, I mean, fried, pan fried pork chops are amazing. So why not deep fry pork chops? So anyway, so there we go. That's the last one. So what I'm going to do is put these in a Ziploc bag. I got one hand clean because that's the hand I'm using for the, uh, uh, the scissors and it's also the hand oh I should get a smaller one it's also the hand I'll be using in a minute because my alarm is going to go off my timer is going to go off for my ground beef that's cooking so uh, let's see if these little jobbers fit in here yeah they fit all right, good deal. So I'll freeze these bones, and whenever I pull those other pork chops or pork steaks out, I will um, when I pull those others out, I will put these in. Or I'll pull those out and let those defrost too. So now, like I said, these are still partially frozen, and I know you're not really supposed to cook certain frozen meats. So I'm going to let these sit out until they defrost and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll give it maybe an hour. I will come back and turn on my, my deep fryer and we will do an experiment together. It's fun to experiment and because I just, uh, these were so cheap. What was it? It was $1.99 a pound. Now, that's just cheap. So, you know, so now I'm going to have all this, all this meat that I will be able to cook up and eat. And, um, for $1.99 a pound. And it's good fatty meat, so I should stay full a good long time. So, anyway, alright, I will come back after this has defrosted and I'll tell you all what's next. Howdy. I uh, have my cool daddy going. Got it set on about 250. I uh, waiting on this little red light to go off. I 
it was sizzling and I could hear from the other room so I come in and thought it was ready but she's still heating up so I'll show you whenever it's done heating up now watch as soon as I push stop it's gonna go off we'll see um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do when it's when it does go off I'm gonna do these little the little cut pieces now I could have if I had a big um a big uh, deep fryer I could have just put the whole pork steak in there bone and all but due to the fact that mine's a small area and a small basket I am um, I didn't want to it's getting on my nerves I didn't want to uh, you know have it kind of folded up and take a chance of part of it not being done right so okay okay I'll be patient and I'll be right back as soon as it is done heating up ha just like I said as soon as I turned it off maybe one minute later so I'm going to lay these pork pieces I did not season it I I don't want, it's not that I'm anti-seasoning, but I'm going to season it when it's done because I don't want to gum up my oil with all that extra seasoning since I'm leaving the oil in here um, in between, you know, for a few a little while. So uh, I don't want to gum up my, get my oil gunky. So I'm going to set the timer for about seven, eight minutes. And we're going to see what it looks like. Okay, it's eight minutes. I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Here's what it looks like now. As it's frying. So I'll come back and uh, show you in eight minutes what it looks like. Now on the other side of my, uh, hang on, sorry, I keep getting alerts. On the other side of my fry daddy, I have um, a cookie sheet with a grate on it. I wasn't really sure what the best way to um, put these and, and let them kind of dry off, cool off. Don't necessarily need to drain the, the grease like I do the, um, like on a paper towel, I don't feel like I need to put it on paper towel, so I don't want to suck all the juices out of it, but um, at least maybe like while things are um, cooling, you know, while the next one's frying, I can let these kind of to drain, and then whenever these that I'm putting in are done cooking. Maybe I can take those off of the little. Often, you know, for the next one to show up. Doggone it, you know what I did again? Because I never think ahead. I should have covered it with aluminum foil. Carn flab it. I can put one more little bitty one. There we go. Got my door open over there in case this smokes a lot. That was eight minutes. So what I'm going to do is eight. I'm going to set this again. And uh, I mean, I don't want to pick up the ones that are done now. So I'm going to let them drain for eight minutes. And then I'll cut into it and see how it looks. And, um, and then we will see if Eight minutes is too long. Too sh I don't think it's too long. Because here, let me bring you around so you can see. They look good. <clears throat> they uh, they look fine. But I don't know how the inside's going to be. And, you know, you want pork to be fully done. So, uh, yeah. So, we will see. Sorry, I don't get seasick on me. But, um, so, in eight minutes, when my timer goes off that these are done... We will check these pork steaks out and see how they are and see if eight minutes is long enough or it needs to go longer or what. So be back, y'all. It's been eight minutes, so let's see what we got here. I want to 
This is the one that I had done. Ow. Yeah, that looks done. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, yeah. So last week, when I did the chicken, I cooked it too long. It was too well done in the middle. And um, the pork rind would have been fine, but I should not have seasoned it. It was just too seasoned. There was too much salt and stuff on it. So, and it's looking like this starts to float. Uh, like just now when I went in there, um, the pork was floating on the top. So, and I heard that about fried chicken. So next time, next week I plan on cooking up some fried chicken. So um, I'll see if I can pay attention to that. I'll drop this next stuff down and I'll pull the other off of this little grate. But um, yeah, that tastes good. I didn't, hadn't salted it or anything. My thought process was I will, and this is awful big, but I'm gonna, since it kind of floats when it's done, I'm just gonna drop it and see how it does. Um, anyway, wait, wait, let me set the timer so I don't. Um, anyway, I, it was just too salty, the chicken was. So I think that with this, I'm going to not salt it. And then when I heat it up, I can salt it. Um, I'm going to need some containers to take it in. I'm out of my deep container, so. But um, let's see, hopefully, which side was the... This is the, the other side. Yeah. I mean, it's like pink, but it's not like raw pink. Hope that makes sense. But whenever I pan fry pork, I pan fry like four or five minutes on each side, so this is the same concept because it's getting all sides for eight minutes. That's juicy. And it's good. And to be honest, that didn't need any seasoning. I was good without it. And I didn't use any, um, any breading or anything. I might try that with my chicken again this next week. Just for some variety. I do find that I'm more satisfied throughout for a long throughout the day when I have beef. But sometimes sometimes you just want something different. And um yeah. And I'm measuring the weight, not for any counting purposes. But I know that I eat at least a pound and a half a day. So I want to make sure that I at least take a pound and a half. So, all right. I'm going to get the rest of these done. And then I'll, this is how many, oh, this is how many I have left. And I'll show you how many containers it makes when I'm done. And there you go. There's four, there's one over here, and then there's a container. Um, but yeah, so that's how they're looking, and they look amazing. So I will put those in my container here, and that will go with me to work this week. You know, it's not very easy 
to do this when I'm trying to look through the camera. Messes up my uh, peripheral vision. So there we go. I made two days worth of meals and I don't remember how much it was. I done threw out the container. So, yep. So there we go. And it may even be three days worth. I'm not really sure. I have to get it all measured out and stuff. But, um, but anyway, so there you go. That's what we had today. Some fried pork steaks.